Welcome to Tipping Points, the Claire's fortunes lie on a knife edge. Let's go for it. Oh, yeah. Het is zo meteen de taak van onze kandidaten om uit te zoeken welk object het meeste vaak is. Come up on the bear quickly. Okay. Oh. Oh. That is one week's worth of shopping. Yeah, okay. Tell us how to change. You really shouldn't let a three-year-old do the shopping. <laughs> this is definitely the start of our family. We've got a nightmare on our hands. Oh, we've got a little white light to you. I have a check here for £70,000. <laughs> TV's in this house. Fine. Did you get me another TV in our living room? We can't do this work if we have it during the trip. It's not possible. We're flics 24 hours on 24, yes. Life as an adult really isn't that different to life in a playground. Please don't do that. Stop bringing me, Richard. You're not the dad. Okay. I don't love you anymore. I think you know. Bye. See you later. This is amazing, amazing clips. Thank you very much, um, Mark Antoine. We, we we saw in the in the clips a mention of uh, of dropped. Um, there was, um, and I must begin with that, there was a drama in Argentina some, uh, some weeks ago uh, with, um, with one of your French uh, production company, uh, a, a, a tragedy with uh, um, some of the best athletes of France and some crew production uh, lost their lives. Can you, what can you know about the investigation uh, today and does it make you change something in well, it certainly makes you reflect on uh, what you do, for sure. Um, it's a tragedy. It's a, a, it's, there's nothing worse, basically. And it's a tragedy not only for the families of the victims, of course, 10 of them, but also a tragedy for Zodiac and everybody that works at Zodiac, and in particular, people working at ALP. And um, the, the thing I can share is that there is a police investigation that's ongoing. Um, everybody could see the clips that, of what happened. It looks very uh, likely that uh, it is a pilot accident, a pilot mistake that created the accident. But we'll know more when the police investigation will be completed. So I can't really share more. We've shared everything we had with the police and we'll see what the outcome is. But you know, the one thing that's for sure is that it has affected uh, everybody working at Zodiac and at ALP in a, an incredible, incredible way. And there is not one day where we don't think about the victims and the families of the victims. Zodiac Media is, uh, is a very young company. It was created uh, five years ago, I think, and, um, in 2010. Yes. And, and you arrived uh, 18 months ago. What, yes. was, what was your roadmap at that time? When I arrived, uh, I arrived at a, a, a particular point in time where a federation that had been created, which is the result of a build-up, acquisitions of five primary companies over the period of 2007 to 2010. Uh, in total, 30 
companies, because some of them had already been developed as their own individual build-up. And with a footprint across Western Europe, all of Western Europe, with the exception of Germany, but also the US, New York, LA, uh, India, Russia. And the reason why I was brought, even though I have no production background, but more a broadcasting background, having run companies in different territories, some of them were part of the Zodiac footprint, which helps. It helps having lived in Stockholm to understand the, the Nordic market. It helps uh, having worked and lived in London, Paris, even Dubai. But fundamentally, what's more important is not the fact that I live in these places. It's more important that I have worked also in situations where there were turnaround challenges and to a degree, there was a bit of a turnaround challenge at uh, Zodiac, not because it was challenge, but because we needed to bring things together. And some initial initiatives had taken place. But clearly, it's easier if you're neutral coming from the outside to see what is good, what can be improved, and how to bring people together from inside, but also from outside the company. We brought quite a few people from the outside. And we changed a few things to bring people together around the same table. And when you do that, and you do it in a relatively neutral way, where you look at... But do, do they work together now? Well, if you look at them, you speak with them openly, and everybody understands what you're doing, uh, they, they start working together very well. And in fact, what was just lacking at Zodiac, which is not that known as a production company with a Zodiac name, but very known as individual companies in different markets, was to find a process by which a local success could travel fast inside a footprint. Because we actually have lots of local successes, but we were not doing the best job at bringing them together because we were a bit too tribal. You mean sharing best practices? Sharing best practices, sharing ideas as soon as they become a success, even ahead of them becoming a success, so you know how to bring them. So we have many cases of formats today inside uh, the Zodiac footprint that are traveling very fast, which is great. It's a good feeling. I'm not the one that made that happen. It's everybody inside the company. There's a creative community. There's an international development board. And it's properly run by professional people that enjoy sharing and enjoy seeing their ideas becoming a success somewhere else and improving their ideas in other markets so that they become international successes. Let's talk about your, your strategy. You are basically mostly uh, at 70% a non-scripted uh, production company. Yeah. Um, and so 30% is, uh, is uh, basically uh, oh, scripted. scripted. Um, do, you, do you think you will change this uh, proportion? And I'd like you to talk about a, a bit about your scripted um, um, new uh, formats. I think you will announce something this week, but I'd like you to talk about um, a format I heard a lot in France is, uh, is, is, is from the Nordic state as well. Yes, um, so quite a few questions. 70-30, where will be the proportion in five years from now? Easy answer, I don't know. But I think the trend is that scripted is growing faster market-wise. There are more opportunities on the on the, on the scripted side to grow fast if we do a proper job. And we have incredibly successful scripted production companies that are very legitimate in their own markets and have come with global concepts such as the Valanders in the past, the Millennium, but also today Occupied or even Versailles, which we're launching this week, which will travel a lot. So, uh, Tell us a bit more about Versailles, the cost Versailles of Versailles. Versailles is an incredible story. It, you know, it's the most expensive production, TV series production ever to have been produced in France. I'm a French guy who worked outside France for most of his life. I didn't think that I would ever see common sense coming to the table in terms of understanding that a show like Versailles can only be financed if it's properly produced with the right ambition and with the right support of Canal Plus, if it's produced in English because the international market is the only way you so can... So Versailles is in English? Versailles is, is, is produced in English, but in France, with a cast that is half French, half English, 
production crews that were coming from mostly France. It's, you know, after the Channel Tunnel, I think the best achievement of Franco-British cooperation in history. And there was, there you will see that on Tuesday when we show, hopefully, you, you, the, you will, the screening. Okay, the screening is on Tuesday. Tell us about Occupied. It's, uh, it's an amazing um, storytelling, right? What is uh, the script? The other script from the north, you mean? Yeah, yeah, the Occupied. The uh, Occupied, sorry. Occupied is an incredible, powerful story from Trust Nesbo, an incredibly successful author, as you know. And he came with the concept of a head way before Russia invaded uh, and is now uh, inside Ukraine with the concept of Russia invading Norway essentially as an eco plot, basically, with at stake the Norwegian petrol and oil reserves. And uh, we have 10 episodes. It's been commissioned by TV2 Norway and Arte, so it will air roughly the same time end of this year in Norway, France, and Germany. And it's an incredibly powerful concept because what you see is what's happening at the same time. Uh, you know, and you know, it's pretty scary for me to read in newspapers that you have actually almost every day now some, uh, some jets, you know, f uh, planes from the Russian uh, uh, Air Force uh, going into the airspace of Norway. So, you know, it's incredible how TV can actually prospect what can actually happen in the near future very powerfully. So we have this coming. Just on uh, scripted and non-scripted, what is on, in terms of uh, creativity? What is your uh, mark de fabrique uh, inside uh, Zodiac? How do you how do you uh, stimulate uh, creativity? How you will find the next big show? How is it? Uh, how does it work in your big network? So there's there's two dimensions: there's the non-scripted and the scripted. In the, the non-scripted, which is you know the backbone of Zodiac. And, you know, we produce roughly half of our non-scripted is our own IPs, original ideas we come and create ourselves. Half of our non-scripted production is third-party third party IPs, like The Survivors, for example, or Best Singer, which is an incredibly powerful uh, concept right now inside Zodiac. On the original ideas, what we have is local teams that are developing new shows for local broadcasters. That's where it, it happens. But what is interesting, and we brought people from the outside to help us moderating a new forum, which we call the International Development Board. They meet every two months, they speak every two weeks, they share the leading producers, not the number two, three, four, the guys who actually lead the charge, sell to channels, come, they take the time, five, ten percent of their time, so that they effectively coordinate together and they enjoy doing it. So that's, that's how you mix a local creativity with the concept of making it traveling. And there's an incredibly you know, powerful uh, exercise when you witness it working. Uh, I must say that it is not an original concept from Zodiac. It happens in other companies. And uh, we brought somebody from Endemol, Grant Ross, who's maybe in this uh, room to help us achieving this process. And maybe the success with Grant on board has to do with the fact that he's, he used to be a rugby professional player, which I think uh, is an important dimension to help moderate the discussions. Between does does it help you uh, on acquisition? Acquisitions is key because we have Zodiac rights here present at uh, the market. Um, it's one of the leading super indie sort of independent distributors. And we do have about half of Zodiac rights sort of business is with third party rights, whether non-scripted or scripted. In scripted, uh, it's uh, probably known that we have a very uh, powerful slate uh, coming, not only because of the return of the returns, I said the original return, not the copy or the at the format. Uh, we have Braco. We have a strong slate that does incredibly well on Canal Plus with Versailles coming. But we also find through our network of local producers and co-producers, because we do also a lot of co-producers, Versailles is a co-production with Kappa. We find uh, 
really incredibly talented uh, jewels. And so we have right now to this market, we bring uh, a series from Switzerland called Station Horizon. I didn't think that I would ever be on a stage promoting an original series coming from French-speaking Switzerland. So it happens that Station Horizon is an incredibly powerful series that is as good, probably, as the best of the Scandi series that came and took the world by surprise, or some of the Israeli ones. So we live in a world where something incredibly good can come from almost about anywhere. You have to be there, you have to listen, you have to look with an open eye, and then you have to be able to react quickly, which we are with our right size, I would say, at Zodiac, able to deliver. And so Station Horizon is available through Zodiac uh, for the world. Let's talk about uh, the new digital world. Um, you know that uh, the young audiences are leaving the, the TV screens. What how do you cope with that? What are you doing to, to face it? We know it well, and I'll give you just one number, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, we have a, a reality show called Paradise Hotel in Scandinavia. We produce it in the four markets. In Sweden, the audience that watches Paradise Hotel, 40% of that audience is actually taking place on internet, on the digital, through mobile, through iPads, through internet. So, you know, that's not far from 50%. And I'm sure you already have shows in the world where that 50% is already uh, achieved. So for us, there isn't one show, and we produce 300 different shows in a year, that isn't produced with in mind what will happen for that show, especially on the non-scripted side, in terms of audience. How can we make sure, working with the broadcasters, that we optimize the impact and the way that people can follow the show between mm -hmm. uh, two prime uh, time uh, airing. We have the case with Isola in the Famosi in Italy, or Superviviente is the two survivors of Italy and France, Italy and Spain, sorry, which are shot live uh, once a week, but have also a, a continuity during the week uh, between Honduras and Spain and, and Italy. And these shows, reinvent themselves on the web. So there's all sorts of dimensions of it, and for us it's critical. Now, this is sort of the consequence of shows that are primarily sold to broadcasters. We also see YouTube inventing the so world. Do, but do, do you work also with the Netflix and the, the Amazon of the world? Or? Absolutely. We, but what is it, what's, what's different to work well, with them? What's different with, with them, we, we're only at the start of this relationship. We have a a product in development, an adaptation of a, a Swedish very successful series with Amazon in, de in development right now. And we are in constant talks with them, which is very interesting for us, which is we used to pitch to our primary broadcasters in each of the markets of Yellow Bird, Touch Paper, Zodiac Fiction. Now at the same time, we can speak to Netflix and Amazon. So the world is becoming bigger. But they compete bigger. with you as well. They, they, you mean Netflix and Amazon? Yeah. They do, they do in-house production, but they're also very interested in having products that come from Europe that can travel the world. And that we can provide. So those are very interesting discussions. They are a lot more sophisticated in terms of trying to define what will work in a particular series, but ultimately data will help them making a decision but I'm sure decision is essentially based on the quality of a story, the quality of the author, of the script writers, the talent, the cast. There's no real fundamental change there. What about Asia? Are you looking to, to Asian markets? And then Asia, we are definitely looking at the uh, Asian market. We're not present with production, we're present with distribution. You know, India, we're present with production, but Asia, with China, we're not present with production. That is certainly a market where we think there's a massive potential, it goes without saying. There are incredible companies, one of which is coming soon on stage with you uh, uh, to very do soon YouTube, as, yeah. as the sort of Chinese Netflix. But I think in many ways they are ahead of Netflix already in some of the shows they commission, the way they structure the tiering system for their subscription. All of these are very sophisticated, so it's interesting to be in business with these guys because they are already ahead of many of the European markets. Going back to the big guys, uh, do you think one day the, the Facebook or the Google will buy a big production company? I think I could 
completely pictured that happening and, and sooner than, uh, than everybody thinks. I, I think ultimately these guys will have a fundamental need to not only get the type of maker type videos that are user generated for most of it, but they'll need some proper scripted and non-scripted shows that are conceived to do well through Google, through YouTube, through all of their competitors. And I think for companies that have talent, creative talent like Zodiac today, this is a phenomenal opportunity. So I think we'll see some of these deals for sure. Marc-Antoine, thank you very much. A big round of applause. Thank Please, you. Please, thank you.